Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hippenitz podcast. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this podcast from northern Tasmania in Australia. This is episode 93 and welcome so very much to all of you. Uh, if you are returning and watching again, thank you so much for coming back and if you're checking out the podcast for the first time, thank you for giving it a chance and I hope you will enjoy catching up with me and my knitting. Doing. You might be able to hear that I sound a bit um, strange or a bit different to how I normally sound. I was hit by a quite bad cold and I'm only just recovering now and it's been um, probably two weeks now that I've been sort of um, just very low in energy and not able to do much. So it's been a bit longer than normal since my last episode I recorded just because I've been sick. And um, now it's my children's turn. So today we're home. <coughs> Excuse me. Today we're home with um, sick children. But that's okay. I'm feeling better, so I feel like I have the energy to look after them. But they're now having some um, screen time, a bit of a treat to relax, and I have a chance to record this podcast. And I'm just very happy to sit down and share with you, as always. Um, things that I have been working on and knitting. I just really love this time that I get to sit down and just talk about things that I love and I hope that you will enjoy um, spending some time with me today. Since I have been sick I have had a little bit more time than normal to um, to knit and spin and other things like that. Um, I've been quite focused on a few projects but since we last spoke I have finished um, Quite a few things um, so I just want to share those with you today but first I just wanted to mention a few other little things I have now listed the Rose Hip Island yarn advent calendar on Etsy the mini skeins is 24 20 gram mini skeins and um, I wanted to actually do a separate little recording about the advent calendars and I wanted to open up to questions so I thought that actually I would make um, a video about not only the advent calendars but also about Rose Hip Island and my my dyeing business and just any, everything from inspiration to my colorways to how I package orders and um, I just wanted to make a video about those things and in that include information about the advent calendar. It's all on Etsy and all the details are on Etsy and I decided to put them up, the pre-orders, put them up quite early because there's a lot of advent calendars out there being promoted and I just wanted you to see what I have to offer so that you're able to compare it to other advent calendars and to be able to make a decision if, if any of them is something that you'd be interested in. But, so I want to, in not too long, do this video about my dyeing and my business and the advent calendar. So I um, would very much appreciate if any um, of you had questions that you wanted to ask me that I can bring up in that video. So if you have any questions about my, my dyeing or my business or the advent calendars, um, just... Um, send them to me in any any way that's convenient for you. Put them in the comments for this video on YouTube. Send me an an email. You can reach me by sending an email to rosehipchick at gmail.com or you can send me a message on Instagram. I am rosehipchick on Instagram or you can send me a private message in Ravelry and I am rosehipchick on Ravelry as well. So I'll I thought that would be a fun video to record and I didn't want to include too much of it in my regular episodes because I guess I could talk for quite a long time about it and not everyone would be interested. So um, please, if you have any questions, um, send them through to me and I'll, I'll um, record that video in uh, not too long. Okay, what else? Um, I have, as I said last time, I have been updating my dyeing area and sort of studio space and uh, I'm not quite there yet. I have it all set up and it's working beautifully 
have been doing a little bit of dye, but I'm still waiting for some um, some things to have the the proper setup. It's still workable, but I am um, I'm still waiting for a few, few um, pieces of the puzzle to make it all work um, smoothly. <laughs> But um, there's still lots of, of stuff in my Etsy shop, so if you're interested, um, just go and check out Rosip Island on Etsy. So, today I am wearing a jumper that I was working on last time. This is the nutmeg jumper that I actually knit for my daughter. It was not finished in time for her birthday, but it was finished shortly after her birthday. The thing was that I was not really enjoying knitting it because of the needles I had. They were not sharp enough. I was using Addies, not the lace ones, just normal Addy uh, needles. And they were quite blunt. And I was sort of, I was trying to get, just get through it because I thought it's thick yarn. Really, it's not a lot of knitting to get the jumper complete. But in the end, I thought, no, I'm just going to treat myself to some nice pointy needles. So... I did um, purchase both like a longer circular needle and a 30 centimeter one for the sleeves in Chiago's um, because I knew that they would be nice and, and, and pointy. So I did order them and then as soon as they arrived I completed knitting the jumper. Um, so it is for my daughter, but I was a bit sneaky and I made it in a way so that it fits me as well. I'll put in some footage of my daughter wearing it. Um, it's a bit of sort of oversized and she has to fold over the sleeves, but it works and she really likes it. This is a yarn that I purchased from a D stash in Ravelry. It's a, I don't have it, I think it's a sublime, luxurious woolly or something like that. The details, again, as always, are on my Ravelry project pages. The needle size, everything is in there. I think I used five fibers, maybe? Yeah, so 250 grams. Does that sound right? Oh, I might have to correct myself on the screen. But this is... Um, jumper called nutmeg by someone I can't remember the name so again I'll put that on the screen didn't make myself very good notes today apparently um yeah so it's a top down um very easy and because this is a very woolly fluffy yarn it just hides any sort of a mistake or any doesn't ha really have stitch definition stitch definition as such it just yeah, it's all just woolly and fluffy. So I just knitted following the smaller size, which was a XXX small, hoping that that would be okay for my daughter. Um, I think it ended up probably because of my gauge. It's a bit hard to see what gauge you have knitting with this yarn. But I think it ended up quite big, so I stopped and separated from sleeves earlier than the pattern suggested but I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure I just thought I'll just knit and just make it work and so the sleeves are sort of down to my wrist um and it's just down to my hip bones I think and it's just not super fitted still loose and it's just beautiful and warm and fluffy and snuggly the, the yarn looks like it's just blue, but it actually has a bit of um, variation in it, in sort of aquas and purples. Yes, and the yarn is a nylon thread with the fluffy merino around it. Like a blue clay, I think it's called. Yes, and um, I'm happy that I was able to make my daughter a jumper like she really loves but that I can wear it as well <laughs> because who knows how long it will last for her. Well, I did make it big, so she should be able to wear it until she's my size now. So that's great. <laughs> yeah, so that's nutmeg in some nice fluffy yarn. And I do have a bit of this left 
left. I used more than half of what I had, but I still have maybe 150 grams. And I thought it would be really cool to um, make beanies and at least use it for the, the brim or the part that goes over your ears. That would be really nice and fluffy. Um, but we'll see. So that's um, finished for this time. My nutmeg. <laughs> Okay, so I think today it's all, well, I'll share mostly knitting with you and I have a little bit of spinning as well. I think we'll start with a bit of a parade of socks. I had quite a few socks that I was working on last time and they were all um, not very close to finishing, but I didn't have much left. The first sock I'll share with you uh, is this one. It's the Felix Socks. Felix Socks by Shara Lambeth of What Shara Made Podcast. This was the test knit I did and I think I showed you one of these last time or finished and I have now completed the other one. So I did complete a test in time. Oh, I already completed a test because you only needed to knit one sock for the test but I did complete um, a second sock in time for um, Shara's um, sock knit along that she was hosting in her Ravelry group. Um, I knit this in Pirate Pearl Yarns uh, in the Blackbeard um, yarn base which is a Polworth and Silk yarn and it's beautiful. Let's see if I actually have it back here. I have all of this left and this is um, the label there. So it's Katrina <clears throat> that dyes this, um, and I've seen on Instagram that she's she's had a bit of a bit of a break from dyeing, but she's back now in her studio dyeing up a storm because she has some um, markets that she's going to vend at. So always fun to see her her new colorways coming up on Instagram. But yes, this is the Felix sock. I talked about it quite a bit last time. Um, I really enjoy knitting it. It was my first pair of lace socks I think. I haven't been doing much um, lace socks because um, I think I was just a bit concerned about how how you wear socks with holes in really or how they will when when you wear them. But I think these will be really nice just um, I think mostly house socks. Um, because they're really pretty and I don't want to put shoes on them. <laughs> um, it's a really, really nice yarn. I love this Polworth and silk. And I love the colourway as well. It's a grey purple tonal. Really recommend this pattern. It was great to knit. Um, and it worked out really quickly. So they're my Felix socks. And they are my New South Wales entry into the 2019 Aussie Dyer Sock Along. And um, if for any reason you haven't heard about this Sock Along that I keep mentioning, um, you can go to the Rose Hip Knits Podcast Ravelry Group and there's information about the Knit Along there. And there's um, one thread for just talking about socks by that we're making using Australian dyed and New Zealand dyed yarn. And there's a FO thread and there's a price thread. So there's lots of really cool socks and lots of really beautiful yarn in there. And there's some amazing prizes to be won. And I think in June I'll do some more price drawings. Um, so yes, if you're knitting socks or anything, anything, not only socks, anything, if you're knitting anything or crocheting anything, weaving, uh, using yarn that has been dyed by an Australian or New Zealand ink dyer, you should go and post it in a thread in Ravelry because you could win some really cool prizes. And mostly really because we really want to see what you're making and we want to learn about new in indie dyes. Okay, so that was sock pair number one and now sock pair number two. And these are the Rag Rug Socks by Vicky Vigera. And I have completed the pair. 
and I purchased the rag rug sock pattern on Ravelry and I sort of followed it. It's a two two row stripe that you do and um, I followed instructions you know for it's cut down um, it had a uh, heel flap and gusset heel but I modified the stitch count that I did because the small the size I think was 64 stitches and I normally do 56 so I did a 56 stitch um, sock and then I found another pattern the to hola socks by Holy Dap that did a heel flap and gusset using 56 stitches as one of the sizes in that pattern so I followed that pattern for the heel and then yes the rest is the rag rug socks so I used an opal yarn and a I think Moda Vera from Spotlight they're both um, in purple shades and you can see in this area here the um, the two yarns were very similar in colour, so you can hardly see the striping there. Here it's really cool striping. So you do two rounds of one yarn and then two rounds of the other yarn. And just like that. The opal yarn is this one here that I used for the toes and the heels. Um, I thought they were really fun. Um, but oh, I don't think they're they look, I don't know, they're fun, but they were not like the Ray Rug socks that I had seen on Instagram. And I can't say that I very much enjoyed doing the heel flap and gusset, but that's just because that's not my preferred method of making the heel. I had to do some little bit of adjustment to the yarn so that I got some sort of matching. Not super important, but I didn't want them to be just a little bit off. So they're those, the rag rag socks. And I did, they're quite tall in the leg. I can't remember how much yarn I used, but it's all on um, my Ravelry project pages. So just, if you go to Rose Hip Chick, my profile on Ravelry, you can have a look at all my projects and all my needle sizes, yarns and everything, patterns that I use in my projects are all there so you can have a look so that was the second pair of socks and I have to tell you I have woven in the ends on all these socks that I'm showing you today which is amazing I've just decided that I'm going to try to do it straight away after finishing a pair of socks because I still have a lot of socks that need to have the ends woven in and um, every now and then I get a boost and I do a few but then they just sit there for a while staring me at me making me feel guilty <laughs> so now I've just decided to weave them in straight away so far it has worked continuing the sock parade my third pair of finished socks are the next pair of rag rug socks and these are um this is what I wanted. This is how I've seen rag rug socks on Instagram. This is what a lot of Vicky Vera's um, rag rug socks look like. <clears throat> this pair is using two different um, colorways of Fable uh, from Drops. And um, I showed you last time, so if you're curious, um, and, and you haven't watched last episode, I'll show you more about the yarn there. I used up most of what I had. One of the colorways was um, blues and purples and greens and a little bit of red and orange. And the other one was one, I think it's called Sunset. And it's this one that I used for the heel, toe and cup. <clears throat> so I um, completed those. It's like totally addictive to just see how they're colours worked up and how the striping was going to turn out. Um, I have this line here from where you um, change the yarn. It wasn't like much point in doing the jogless um, stripe I found when there's only two stripes. 
uh, two rounds per stripe. Um, I had a message on my last video saying that what you can do is you put a line on the left side on one of them and on the right side on the other one so that you can have them pointing both of them outwards or in I guess <clears throat> so they're more like a, a bit of a, a feature Um, I really love these I really love them and as you can see on these ones I did not do the heel flap and gusset I used the um, short row German short row heel that Shara um, has in her Felix sock pattern because I really enjoy that one and I'm going to soon show you that I have used that again <laughs> and again um, yes yeah, so my rag rag socks I'm super happy with them and again I have woven in the ends and I did that straight away and the really cool thing or one thing that I really appreciate with the rag rag socks is that you get all this fun striping and it looks like you use lots of different yarns but you only have four ends to weave in it's just the start and the finish of each of the two balls so I really like that <laughs> so yes three pairs of socks um, and I wasn't far off finishing them when I last spoke to you like three weeks ago so they have been finished for quite some time now and then I think shortly after I had finished all of these four items I got sick and I was very much not able to focus much on anything and just um, sitting and I, I needed something something fun and new to do but that didn't require too much um, brain power and I had I think I had I don't know if I had mentioned it on the podcast but I had said that um, I wanted to make another pair of socks out of um, this book that I have Tant Ultus Soku and um, it's available in English as well this is Swedish um, in English it's called Tant Ultus Socks and it has lots of really beautiful socks in it um, or color work socks I have made one pair previously I've made this pair before in a white and purple and pink and um, for May and June the Aussie Sock Knitters group on Ravelry they are doing a knit along with um, uh, patterns that you have had in your library or in, like in books for a long time but you never knit them so I thought I wanted to make another pattern out of that book because I've had it for a while um, let's see if it fell down on the floor so I thought okay I had put in my queue one of, of, of the patterns this one here is called Rut Rainbow and I when I looked at it I thought oh that would be really cool to make with minis and I had have had um, well I'm always on the lookout for patterns that would work well with mini skeins and I think because just recently I've been trying to use my minis from the advent calendar last year and I'm, I'm still planning to make myself a uh, jumper using my sparkly minis uh, I just haven't started that just yet <laughs> but um, yes I've, I had been thinking about knitting which one is it now this one using mini skeins and it turned out that um, I had um, a set of minis that was missing a mini so a set um, when I sell mini skeins in my shop on Etsy I put them in sets of five mini skeins so five times 20 grams so you get 100 grams uh, and I had for some reason I'm not sure why I had a set that only had four mini skeins um, and they were out of my fairy friends colorways do I have I have it here. I have both here. I think this is the last one. So this is the Fairy Friends um, mini skein set. So I had one that was missing the the bright pink. But I had a 
just a tonal um, purple. So I had five colors. The pattern actually has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different colors in sort of a rainbow. But I looked at how much of them you actually use and I figured out I would have enough using my own mini skein set. And um, I just used an undyed mini skein to do the white. And I made these socks. So the tonal purple I had, I used for the calf and the heel. And I will use it for the toes. And it turns out that because my feet are on the smaller side, <laughs> I am... Um, I could get away with using only three colors and do three on the leg and then I'll do three on the foot before the toe and that should turn out about the right size for me. I tried it um, by when I had made the heel I put them on um, with the toes out this way and I could see that yes um, three different colors would be good length before I start my, my uh, toe. Again, on this one, I made a German short row heel, and um, that worked really well. It's uh, 64 stitches, so a bit bigger than what I normally use for my socks, but because it's color work, I think that's just good. So I've used the blue one, the purple one, and the bright pink. Oh, so I had the bright pink. I don't know which one it is. That. Oh, I don't have the, the dark, um, dark purple is the one I was missing. So there is also... The bluish one, and I, the lighter blue, the darker blue, the lighter blue. Oh my gosh, confusing. I uh, still have cold brain. Um, so I was going to use this one if I needed a fourth color, but I didn't, and I had enough um, to make two socks just using 20 grams of the those three colors, and then 20 grams of the tonal purple, and then I'm using one mini skein of the white for each of the socks. I'm not sure how much I will have left, but I have actually got quite a bit made on this. So as you can see, here I have I have the three colors, heel, and then the three colors again, and then I'll do a purple toe. So I thought that was a really fun way to use that mini skeins, and I really, I mean, I do like how they look in the pattern here with the solid colors. But, I, I mean, I just love them with the sort of variegated tonal yarns. And I think the pattern will also work really well if you want to maybe use a grey or a black for the, where I have used a white, and then also use the, the grey or black for the heels and cuff and toe. And um, I don't know if you can do an electronic copy of these patterns on Ravelry, and I mean it's sold from Sweden so if you're not in Sweden postage can be quite expensive I think to order it but I do believe that there are some sock patterns with a similar sort of color work um, pattern happening and there might be some that are just like two colors but of course you can just make them with minis and stripe them so these ones were like all I worked on and all I really did except for sleeping and eating <laughs> for a couple of days when I was sick I was um, it was the only thing I could do um, I felt to feel a little bit productive but not actually do anything of importance <laughs> and I really love them and I was really happy to use some of my minis um, so that's that's an idea for you if you have some mini skeins or partial skeins um, to do a, sort of a pattern like this for socks. And I'm so happy about my other socks and how I've woven in all the ends. I'm not sure how that's going to go with these socks because I have a few more ends on these ones. I'll do my best to um, get them all woven in as soon as I finish the socks. But, um, I really, really need to learn how to do the weaving in as you go. I have, I have watched a YouTube tutorial about it, and I think I've sort of put it in my um, playlist. 
on YouTube, so I still have it there. But I just really need to take the time to, I think the one I have is where you start knitting, you knit it in the new strand of yarn when you're still working with the old colour. So you do double stranded for a little bit. I can't remember exactly, but that would just, I think, save me so much time and it would mean that I would actually have my socks finished, finished and um, I'd be able to wear them and they wouldn't be sitting in a bag waiting for those ends to be woven in. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, yeah, so I still have, um, I mean, I have small feet, but I do have quite a bit left of my um, yarn. So I think the one that I have, yes, so the blue, I have used all of the blue that I need and I still have quite a bit left. I have not um, weighed it, but um, definitely plenty, plenty of yarn uh, for my socks. So that was something that was the only thing I worked on for a while. And then I have been wanting to start another jumper. I'm still working on Magnolia a little bit, but I think I have just I've realized that lace knitting is just not my thing, not at the moment anyway. So I do a few rounds every now and then, and then I put it down and I get all obsessed with some other project that I'm working on. And I have not touched my brioche cow. I think once I get going on that, I would really love it because I really love the colours and brioche is fun once you get into it. But I haven't had that um, brain space of actually sitting down and focusing and getting into it. So I wanted to cast on a new jumper. And I know that I was going to do the, the top-down jumper, probably a flax light using mini skeins, but I was just not feeling it I guess and I was tidying up in my studio because I was setting up my workspace outside and previously I've had my dice and a lot of my tools in here but now I have a space outside for them at the actual dyeing area so I was tidying up and moving things around in here and I was looking at my different lots of yarn for colour work jumpers and I have a few that I have, I've purchased a pattern and they're sitting in my queue in Ravelry and I have purchased a yarn for them. It's all ready. So I thought I'm going to start one of those now. And I guess I should have started one that has been in my queue the longest and I've had the yarn sitting waiting for the longest. But it turned out that I instead started on the one that I've just recently got the yarn for. And that was because it was sitting out, I still hadn't sort of put it into my stash and it's quite bulky and I thought, no, I'll just start working on that and then I don't have to put it away. So that's much better. Um, and if you have watched um, previously, you know that my, my mum, um, she sends me stuff every now and then and recently she sent me some Let's Loopy. Um, let's see. She sent me three colorways of Let Loopy that I had um, wished for. Uh, she was going to an event to market and, and I knew that they would have Let Loopy there. And um, I looked at some jumpers that I wanted to make and I found one by Jennifer Steingast and someone that had used Let Loopy and looked really great. So I, th I thought, I really want to try Let Loopy. I've, I've watched a few podcasts. Uh, mainly Swedish ones where they have used Let Loopy and I've just been really curious about using it as well. So mum sent me a sweat a lot, a jump a lot of Let Loopy for Vintersul, a pattern by Jennifer Steingas. And I have, as a maniac, been knitting on this for the last week or so. Uh, and it is huge. I thought, and other people had used Let Loopy for this project, and I did a swatch, and I thought that my gauge was correct. But then when I started knitting it, I realised that I was so off gauge. Um, I must be much looser knitter when I, I don't know, when I do colour work or when I knit in the round. It's just enormous. And how you knit this is a bit differently 
um, you cast on here with a waist yarn and then you start knitting with your main colour and you knit the yoke from bottom and up and then you undo the waist yarn and have um, you get live stitches of your main yarn and then you knit down. Um, so I cast on for the size that I thought I would be and it was enormous but it was really hard for me to, to understand the size of it because of so oh yes you do it here this is where you cast on up here so you can see like it is that's the the widest part of the whole jumper but it was I realized after having knitted all the short row all the short rows in the back that no this was going to be way too big check my gauge and yes it was loose so I undid it and um Try to not have to redo the waist yarn portion. I just sort of knitted two together a few times on the waist yarn portion and then cut them, um, started again with the main colour. But I went down to the smallest size. And I think from the start I did the fourth size. Excuse me. So I went down four sizes. And it is still big. But I had a cold. I didn't want to think, I just wanted to knit and I'm not going to redo it. <laughs> so I um, knit the yoke. I haven't, um, it's an eye cord bind off at the neck and then you meant to um, kitchen it together, the live stitches. I haven't done that yet because I'm not sure if it's going to be the right, let's see, this is the front one. Um, I don't know, I made it a little bit tighter than the pattern. Just I think it is not tighter than it's meant to be, but because my gauge was loose, I think my neck was a bit wide. Um but I did that. But you can see it's really um bulky, but I'm uh, because I have never worked with Let Loopy before, I'm not sure how it's going to be after a wash. Um, this will definitely be a jumper that will be like outerwear. It's going to the snow and putting on top of maybe another jumper because it's, it's big. But I, I completed the yoke. I'm very happy with it and now I'm working the body down. So I separate it for the sleeves and then I'm knitting down on the body. Um, the body looks fine in size. The sleeves look like they're going to be quite big and fluffy. But um, I'm happy with it. I'm happy... Um, to be using Let Loop, it's, it's really fun. So now I will have one Jennifer Steingast jumper using Icelandic wool, and I have one already using Norwegian wool, the Starfall one that I did that I really love. And what I have been doing now with the sizing of this and not being sure is that I've, I've put it um, on top of my Starfall jumper, um, because I really like the size of that, so I can sort of then gauge if it's what the size of this will be like and I I think it is okay but as I said um, I'm hoping it will sort of put together a bit when I, I wash it I don't know have you have you worked with let loopy before do you have any recommendations or any suggestions when it comes to washing and blocking And I realised knitting this that really colour work and also with the socks, like colour work is just my thing. It's just what I want to do. Um lace, not so much at the moment. <laughs> uh, so yes, this is the second second half of me being sick and not being able to do much. I've been knitting this yoke and now I'm knitting the body. And really now I want to start on a different yoke for a different job. <laughs> but I should finish this first because I can't have the magnolia and this sitting not being finished. Um, yes, I'm very happy with this and I really want to finish it and wear it. And another reason, I mean, one of the reasons for starting with or casting on this jumper was that I had the wool out. I had not put it away yet. It was out. It was ready to go. Um, but also I thought it's the thickest jumper. Um, I'm ever going to make probably. I mean, I have a 16 ply yarn that I'm going to make a jumper from, but it's still not going to be like the Icelandic jumper, I think. 
And I thought, now it's winter. It's just turning to winter. It's going to be quick knit because it's thick yarn. This is the time to make it so I can wear it this winter. So that's what I want to do. I want to have it ready for ski season. I'm very happy with the colours. It was actually someone else on Ravelry that had used these colours, I think, so I asked them not to get these to the waist. So that's uh, the other thing I have been working on. So yes, the socks and that jumper, they are the things that I have been working on in the last, um, in the last few weeks. And then the last thing that I want to share with you is the spinning that I have done. Um, last time I had a single of this. <clears throat> this is a Tasmanian Merino that I dyed in the top a while ago and then now I spun it into two singles and then I um, plied it together as a two ply. I'm very happy with that. It's a bit thick and thin and a bit fun. It's beautiful and soft. What I am doing or trying to do is um, just um, I want to use my hand spun and I have quite a lot of, of top that I have purchased that has purple shades and blue shades um, so what I want to do is maybe put them all together in, in a, a project uh, I don't know I don't know but I yeah that's another skein of hand spun and I have another purple one that I'm about to start um, spinning as well so I did that so it's fun to be doing a bit of spinning again I just really need to make sure that I use the yarn that I make <laughs> um, they are the things that I have been working on and that I have finished um, I've had some things arriving in the mail my mum was very generous and sent me another box of goodies and there were some really excellent books in there also the latest issue of the Novita magazine it has a few fun things in it there was actually there was a jumper in here colorwork jumper <laughs> that I felt um, tempted to make let's see it's probably the first thing this one here and I showed you I think was it last time I showed you the other uh, issue of a Novita magazine I had and I was saying everything was worked in pieces and sewn together this one is actually knitting around and I think that could be a fun one so that's the Novita I uh, think it's issue 2 2019 and this is in Swedish <clears throat> then mum also sent me a few books a lot of colour work knitting books uh, with history so uh, fisherman jumpers and it has a lot of historical um, well, uh, stories a lot of history about jumpers from different parts of, of the world um, so these are jumpers that fishermen used in different parts of Europe I think so there's Iceland, Denmark, um, Island of Gotland, I think Guernsey and Russia and yes so I've been having a bit of a read in that and I just I mean I always enjoy the history of these things but I also um, like um, all of the, the shards that you then can use for other things and it, it's still my plan to one day make up my own colour work jumper I think that will be lots of fun I, I wouldn't attempt to make it a pattern I just want to do it for fun and just make it up as I go I think and then there's um, another knitting tradition book that has a lot of um, History from different parts of the world and knitting there and um, different traditional patterns. Let's see, are there any? And just construction, different ways of, of knitting um, jumpers and, and cool old style stuff. 
<clears throat> and my mum sent me a book about knitting with um, plant dyed um, yarn. <laughs> That's really cool. Really cool um, jumpers in it. It's a little bit like Hunsistic. I love this one. So they're all with plant dyed yarns and so this these books are just so much fun to have a look through and then um really good um, reference book uh, it's called sticker which is knitting and it's by a lady in in sweden who's put in like all the techniques for different things um like techniques for necklines and so it doesn't have patterns it just has all these different techniques for ribbing and seaming and yes it's just an excellent um, reference book <clears throat> so I got those and I, actually, I did get some silk mohair yarn for mum as well I have to find a project for that I have uh, 25 gram balls in I think three different colors a blue and a red and a pale gray and I really would like to make some something a garment or something using those maybe doubled with something else so that's another thing that I'm, I'm thinking about so much dream knitting so much <clears throat> and then as I said I ordered uh, needles to complete this jumper <coughs> and um, the shop that I found online that had the Chiago needles in the sizes that I needed and in the 30 centimeter because I needed a 30 centimeter um, uh, what is it called uh, circular needle in a 4.5 millimeter I think and then I also wanted to get another 2.5 millimeter needle and some other sizes so the shop that I found that had this was natural fiber arts is that what it's called natural fiber arts and when I had a look in that shop I also saw this skein and I bought that so this is a tweed sock yarn it's a three ply and it has one ply I think that is superwash and two that are non-superwash or the other way around but it makes it have this sort of tweedy look and this was in the sales section and I just loved it and I grabbed that when I got the the needles and then I also got some greener shade dyes to try out I'm always um, experimenting with new dyes and new tools for my dyeing and uh, I wanted to try the greener shade side so I got a little sample kit of that that I'm going to try out and this can be my Aussie sock along Queensland entry maybe I have some other ones but yes I really thought that was fun I'm looking forward to knitting that up in a pair of socks to see how how this all <laughs> what happens with these colors and and I think that's um, all. That's a few finished projects, a few things that I'm working on, spinning that I finished, and some new books and yarn. Um, so as I um, mentioned before, I am planning an episode about my dyeing in Rosip Island and uh, it will have a lot of information about the advent calendars and if you have any questions or any suggestion about things and topics that I can talk about um, please let me know um, and I will record that soon and those that are interested in watching it can do that or if you're more interested in just catching up with knitting and other things um, just just skip that one <laughs> Okay, so I feel like I have been talking for quite some time now and yes, I'm not quite back to um, fully recovered after my cold. So I'm, I think I'm due to have a nice hot cup of tea now. Um, I'm very happy that I had the chance to sit down and, and talk and, and catch up with you and share with you the things that I have been working on. I've had lots of fun with my knitting in the last few weeks. Um, I mean, it makes being sick so much better when you can just get all into your knitting and your hobby and just have your own little happy place in 
all of them is free. <laughs> okay. And um, that's all I want to share with you today. But I, I should be back soon with a special episode. And um, yes, I hope you have enjoyed this um, this time. And um, hmm. as always, any comments, questions, anything, just put them in the comments. Send me a private message, anything, and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much for being on this uh, channel with me and thank you for subscribing and liking and um, just being there and supporting and just yes being part of our community um thank you to all of you for watching and i will see you next time so bye and take care